Hi everyone, it's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farm. Today I'm here at Ladue Topiary Gardens to show you around this amazing public garden. And I just couldn't be more excited to come to this garden today. It's been probably at least four years, maybe even five years since I've been here. And I've never seen the rose garden in bloom, but I remember that the rose garden was huge, filled with rose arbors. And so I'm so excited to share that garden as well as 28 additional gardens with you today. So let's just have some fun and take a look around. So I'll just take you through the gardens exactly how you encounter them if you were to visit here at Ladue. So this is Mr. Ledoux's house here, and you can do a tour of his house as well for an additional $5. I did that once with my aunt and my cousin, and it was really fun. He's really in, he, or he was really in fox hunting, and you kind of hear a little bit of history about him and his personality and how he developed all these gardens. Just a beautiful water lily pond here around his house. And it looks like there are some Siberian iris planted around. I do recall from being here in the past that even though this garden is wonderful, they don't label a lot of things. So I'll do my best to describe the plants that we're seeing as we go along as best I can. So let's turn this way and walk along his porch and see some amazing topiary because that's what this garden is really all about. I think they say that they're one of the 10 most spectacular topiary gardens in the entire world. And this is here in Maryland. I see some gorgeous clematis there. So we could either go straight and go down to that pond, but it looks like some people are working there at the moment. So let's go through this little entrance here and see what lies beyond. But isn't the topiary awesome already? And I love the sense of enclosure and entrances that they're able to create with all the topiaries here. I'm sorry it's a little bit sunny today. I was trying to wait for an overcast day, but then I thought, you know what, we just better see it while we can and see all these gorgeous roses. So this garden here is called the Croquet Court. And can you imagine having enough land to have a garden that's dedicated to playing croquet? How cool would that be? So do you guys think that this table is where the ladies would sit and keep score? It says that he built this house in the 1920s or that he purchased the house in 1920. And I wonder too, if back then he had a different kind of grass growing here in the croquet court, something more like you would use on a golf course. But you can see here too, how this whole garden room is enclosed in what looks like you. And perhaps they've even lost a bit of that you throughout the years, but still beautiful. And all these really fun windows to look into this main garden here. And so it looks like as we leave the croquet court, we'll hit what we're here for, the rose garden. So the entire rose garden is walled in. It's basically a large circle divided into three smaller circles that you can walk through with lots of climbing roses over both the arbors and the wall itself. I wish you guys could smell it in here. It's absolutely delicious. And I love the use of lambs here under all the roses as well. Well, it's definitely worth coming just to see and smell that, but there's still lots more gardens to explore. So let's head on to the next one. I don't really remember this garden. It says it's called the Keyhole Garden. It does look like this topiary is the shape of a key. So let's walk through here. Oh, this is a fun, nice kind of circle courtyard garden some beautiful hostas, cannas in there. I like the tropical feel of this. 
I really like the colors in this garden. They kept it simple with blues and reds. It looks like we have a plum here. So now we're at the water lily garden, but I do see some signs up that say garden repair underway. But I still do see some beautiful water lilies in here. Looks like black mundo grass is going to fill in this area. You know what's really interesting, guys? Are you able to hear all the traffic in the background? So I imagine when he bought this property, because I think it says, let me look at the map here. It says that when he purchased it in the 1920s, it was 200 acres. And at that point it was called Pleasant Valley Farm. So I'm assuming we didn't have any road noise back then, but let's travel down this path and see what garden we end up at. It looks like they're ahead of us here because they have some Asiatic lilies in bloom. So we can go either this way to the yellow garden or down this path. And I'm really attracted to the use of stone here. So I think I'm gonna continue straight. This area is really beautiful. Love all the textures of the ferns and the hostas. And you can tell there was lots of azaleas in bloom over here recently. A beautiful mock orange here at the end of this garden. But look what we arrive at, a tea house. I think we have to go in there. Oh, this is fun. This is like I died and went to 1950s floral heaven in here. The room is pink with paintings of birds and that beautiful 50s teal blue everywhere with blue and white china, a floral arrangement. And look at the beautiful tea setting. Do you guys love this? I wish we could all have one of these in our gardens. So we just left the tea house there and I love how they have these smaller fountains everywhere. It looks like this must be an all purple garden. I am seeing some perennial scabiosa, some perennial geranium, and it looks like there's some dahlias tucked in here also. And by the look of the shrubs, it looks like we have lilac that would have been in bloom. What do you guys think this topiary is supposed to be? Is it maybe a carriage, like a Cinderella carriage? Now here we are at the sculpture garden where I see lots and lots of topiary. So let's see if we can ID what some of these topiary are. I'm always really bad at this, so hopefully you guys will help me out. This one looks like a whale. Oh, that one is definitely a peacock. But what's next to the peacock? Is it a dog? Oh gosh, this is embarrassing. I'm not sure what that one is. Oh, that's a beautiful vista right there, isn't it? So guys, this is pretty embarrassing because I can't tell what half of these things are. What's this first one here in the front? I feel like the one after that's definitely a peacock. But in terms of all these other ones, I'm struggling. Is this one an anteater? A unicorn? I don't know. Have you seen any of the Gardener's World episodes where Monty Don shows Topiary Nigel? Oh, I wish I could do a Topiary Grace. I'll have to take some classes on that. I remember that episode when Monty shared that Nigel had passed. I still lose it just thinking about that. Dogs and gardens are just the best, aren't they? I wish every one of you could see this in person. This is the garden that I feel like Ledoux is really known for. It's called the Great Bowl. Usually there's a small fountain running in the middle there, but you can just see Mr. Ledoux's house in the distance there and really his creative and amazing use of topiary. Swans lining this whole area here. Let's go through that entrance there. I recall there being like a grand ship down there. So this entrance should take us to the iris garden. I'm guessing most of the irises have turned at this point, but let's take a look and see. 
oh, a gorgeous stream running through this garden. Let's go down there straight away. So there are a few iris still in bloom. This garden is so interesting. Is it deep English borders? Is it somewhat Japanese? Is it a water lily garden? I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? This area is almost reminding me of my grandma's garden because it almost feels like, you know, when I remember back to her gardens and I recently went to her house and all the gardens were pretty much gone. But the way that I would describe her garden is if she liked it, she planted it wherever it would be happy. And so she just would have these massive, massive flower borders everywhere. Not too much rhyme or reason for texture or meaning or defining a garden space, but just really enjoying plants, a lover of plants. I really like this garden, but I thought there was a ship here. Let me keep looking. Well, I didn't find the ship, but I did find this Buddha. That's really cool. So now that I've been to this garden at a few different times of the year, I think the best time to visit is probably about a month ago to maybe even a half month ago, more when the azaleas, rhododendrons, and lilacs are in bloom, just because there's massive amounts of those shrubs here. So which garden do you guys like best so far? You know, to be honest, I think I actually like the tea house best of all the gardens, and that's not even a garden, but we still have lots more to see. This is a really cool fountain here, and I think I've spotted the largest birdhouse that I've ever seen. <laughs> There's another huge one over there, and it looks like he has a deer in front of his house, a deer topiary. Well, great news guys. I just checked the map to see if we missed any gardens and we missed the cutting garden, which I have never been to the cutting garden here before. So let's go find that. It says it's down by the butterfly house, which it doesn't look like that's open yet. And also the studio. So we can see some art while we're here. On our way to the cutting garden, I remembered there's this hidden gem over here. Check out this room dedicated to playing poker. How would you like to have something like that out in your garden? Well, I found it, guys. I'm wondering if this is actually a brand new garden. I think I'll try and ask because I remember sitting down here with my cousin once and I don't remember there being any garden. So let's see what we have here. It looks like some geraniums. I wonder what they're gonna be growing up all these bamboo poles. I see some purple basil, some other kinds of basil in here. I'm guessing there's gonna be dahlias up all these bamboo poles. I think this definitely must be a new area. Oh yeah, I see some dahlias popping up here. So definitely a lot of great potential over here in the cutting garden and I love how they have the raised beds set up but it does look like they're probably just getting started so maybe I'll have to come back in September and see all these dahlias in bloom because that will really be gorgeous. So this area here is called the cottage garden and if you get Fine Gardening magazine I'm pretty sure this is the area that was featured maybe a year or two ago. Although I think there was a lot more tropicals in this garden when it was featured. I have never ventured over here before and hopefully I'm allowed to. Beautiful alliums, peonies, different grasses, 
I see some Amsonia, all kinds of beautiful things in this garden. And do you think that's a butterfly topiary over there? And it looks like we've got some wisteria here climbing up the house. Well, friends, thanks so much for spending some time out here at Ladue Topiary Gardens with me. I hope you enjoyed the tour. On this summer's agenda, I have lots more tours in store, and I've also created a playlist of all the public gardens that I've visited in years past. So if you want to check that out, I would really recommend the tour of Chanticleer Gardens, which is my all-time favorite public garden. I just don't think you can beat it. But I'm looking forward to visiting some new gardens with you this year. I want to wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!